Also, there would be a political dispute because the earthly nations have decided among themselves that a neutral area is to remain there. But at the moment, it wouldn't be neutral for the states anymore if people firmly settled there. The second place would be much better climatically than the first, but a suitable station for survival and real security would still cost, at least, many millions even there. Certainly, it could still be established there if we had enough people and money or could find this within a short time. But those are really the only two recommended places? Sam Yeh says, you spoke of the greatest possible security towards survival. Yes, these two would be the only truly safe places. Billy says, in Europe, no place might found where there could be safety, right? Sam Yeh says, not before a possible war, no. With respect to this, there is absolutely no security. Only in reference to earthquakes can safe or reasonably safe areas be mentioned. Billy says, like Hintershmidrati, but this gives us no advantage if the great something, nevertheless, comes one day. Sam Yeh says, until then, you'd all really have to be secured with all necessary material, etc., that is, if you can actually continue your task and the whole mission was to be fulfilled. Otherwise, settling down in a safe place would make no sense. Billy says, of course, because what human life should be protected and be preserved if, through perverseness and selfishness, etc., this life is unalterably exposed to decay and destruction? Sam Yeh says, it sounds inhumane, but it reflects the truth. But it would be good if everything. Billy says, leave this now, please, it profits nothing. One shouldn't cry over lost or declining things. Only fools cry over losing. Sam Yeh says, It is shocking to hear this profound truth from your mouth in this respect. Billy says, Maybe, but now, can you still answer another three-part question for me? Sam Yeh says, Sure. Billy says, It concerns the forms of time travel, if you want to give me information about this. Sam Yeh says, ask. Billy says, well, thank you. Yes, recently, I had a video rental. Its title was The Final Countdown. The story goes that an American aircraft carrier was driven by a magnetic storm into a dimension gate and was hurled from the year 1980 into the year 1941. Then, by accident, so to speak. A crew member of the ship stayed behind in 1941, while the aircraft carrier returned again, via a new magnetic storm and via a dimension gate, to the year 1980. Now in the film, the left-behind crew member, who was approximately 30 years old in 1980, logically live on from the time of 1941. This seems to be rather logical to me according to my knowledge. Now. However, comes what can no longer be logically placed into reality. The crew member left behind in 1941 pursued the outlet of the aircraft carrier until the year 1980, and this man, who would have had to turn 69 years old in the meantime, could see himself as his approximately 30-year-old self as a crew member on the ship, which then transported him via the magnetic storm into the past. According to this story, he would have remained in the year 1941 and then would have seen his own birth in 1950 and then would have lived parallel with himself for 30 years, so once young and once old. Sam Yeh says, that is impossible. Billy says, nevertheless, it is only impossible if both want to live in the same time plane both who are, nevertheless, only one person. The one staying in the past of 1941 would have had to die in 1949 at the latest, after which he would then have to be born again in 1950. This is so because the spirit form of the man is the same at both times of his life, right? Sam Yeh says, 
This is very clearly explained. So it behaves in reality. Billy says, well, such a coexistence of life would only be possible if two different dimensions existed. Sam Yez says, that's right. Billy says, well, then this case is clear. Then to the next one, many people are of the opinion that they could do different things in the past and change the future if they had the opportunity for a journey to the past. But according to my knowledge, this is impossible because the future and apparent present have already happened, respectively, because the events in the future follow the already reported past events. Therefore, a man could not travel, for example, into the past to kill his own father or mother. He was begotten by and born from his mother. Therefore, if a man returned to the past to kill his mother or his father still before his birth, then this past traveler could have never been born. Is this right? Sam Yez says, sure. Billy says, good. So far, this is clear. Everything would be a paradox. And just to get around such a paradox, one would have to switch off the laws of space and time, so such a journey to the past can never take place in a way that the time-traveling person also actually reaches the same material plane that exists in the past. And this also applies to the future. However, this also means that space and time are different in their expansion and in their speed in the past and in the future which has the consequence for the time traveler that he penetrates into another dimension that is not handy for him, materially. He could probably live in this other dimension and exist if the living conditions allowed it, but he couldn't associate with the ways of life there if he didn't have special aids for this. He would remain virtually invisible to the life forms of the past or future, or he could be recognized, at most, as patterns. Am I right there? Sam Yez says, your explanation reflects the facts. Billy says, so this also means that in the events of the film, the final countdown, a certain logic probably plays along with them, but the one staying in the past obviously could not have lived on a material form in the normal time plane, even if he then would have appropriately died in 1949. He only could have lived on in an invisible form or, at most, as patterns in the next possible time dimension during the time from 1941 to 1980, but not in the material form, as this was given from 1941 to 1980, when the young man was born and was later launched, with the ship, into the past. Is that also right? Sam Yez says, sure. Billy says, ah, now it begins to take form. Now, if people or machines and such travel into the past or the future, these are invisible to the people or other life forms living there, although, the time travelers can live there if they find suitable living conditions. This is in contrast to when people or machines simply penetrate into parallel times and, thus, into parallel dimensions which are temporal and spatial and are exactly the same, thus, materially like the time plane from which the time travelers came.